Hello AP US History B students studying for your Unit 5 quiz and going over information to help you on your essays and uh, discussions for the course. I will also be preparing for our final here soon. Um, so please take notes as I go along. I will be mentioning the page numbers where you can um, pick up the details of the topics I will be discussing here. We're going over the 1920s and the Great Depression. We've uh, discussed the 1920s already we're going we're starting uh, kind of an analysis of the Great Depression and depression and a few other topics um, so let's pick it up with uh, where I left off um, an accurate evaluation of the New Deal and of course this is uh, something we can debate in class um, and is always debated um, publicly um, page 775 uh, it was a moderate and relatively ineffective. It was moderate and relatively ineffective economically, but it did produce sweeping political changes, putting the Democratic Party in the majority. Looking at page 775, the least impressive achievement of the New Deal came in, in the economic realm. Whatever credit Roosevelt has given in relieving human suffering in the depths of the Great Depression must be balanced against his failure to achieve recovery in the 1930s. The moderate nature of his programs, especially the um, unwieldy uh, National Recovery Administration, or NRA, uh, led to a slow and halting industrial recovery. Although much of the improvement that was made came as a re result of government spending, FDR, FDR never embraced the concept of planned deficits, striving instead for a balanced budget. As a result, the nation had barely reached the 1929 level of production a, dec a decade later, and there were still nearly 10 million men and women unemployed. Equal, equally important, important, Roosevelt refused to take any sweeping changes in the e American economic uh, system. Aside from the Tennessee Valley Authority, there were no broad experiments in regional planning and no attempt to alter free enterprise beyond imposing some limited forms of government regulation. The New Deal did not or did nothing to alter the basic distribution of wealth and power in the nation. So going on from there, it took the World War, World War II, not the New Deal, to end the Great Depression, and the New Deal coalition made the Democratic Party the majority party for the next 50 years. Uh, let's see, okay, which of the following was not the cause of the Great Depression? Um, high taxes for Social Security system took too high a percentage. Actually, obviously, Social Security started as part of the New Deal, so that's not one of the causes of the Great Depression. The consumer goods revolution uh, contained the seeds of its own demise, really the uh, installment plans, borrowing when you had no money, all of this can be reviewed on page 751, banks giving out loans when there's no, um, no money coming in to pay back these loans. The National Recovery Administration of the NRA tried to guarantee codes of fair practice, this, is, this can be reviewed on page 757 of your American Past and Present textbook. As First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt did many things, and you can read those on read or review those on page 770. She worked for civil rights there for the civil rights of minorities. She set an example of activism that inspired many American women, and she revolutionized the role of the First Lady, taking a much more active role. She uncovered wrongdoings, bringing them to the president's attention. Um, again, all this can be reviewed on 770. The Great Depression. Uh, the chapter opens up with a discussion of this uh, on page 751. It caused many Americans to doubt the strength um, of America's future, or the, the America's strength and America's future. Um, coming out of the hope and prosperity of the 1920s, it was kind of putting on the brakes a little bit too fast for many Americans, and they went from uh, basically a kind of, of glee and uh, adulation to a quick um, depression, putting on the brakes pretty quickly. The effect of the court packing scheme, you remember Roosevelt on page 770 or 773 tried to pack the courts with um, uh, judges that would sympathize with his positions uh, in democratic reform. Uh, this attempt weakened the president's relations with Congress from there on out. You can review this again on page 773. You'll want to list the elements of the American life that were changed by the automobile. You can uh, re review this on page 721. I'll back up for a moment and read a portion of that for you. 
The automobile had a profound effect on all aspects of American life in the 1920s. Filling stations appeared in the main streets, replacing the smithies and the stables of the past. In Kansas City, uh, Justy Nicholas built the first shopping center, country club, plazas, and thus set up the example that quickly followed by other suburban developers, hence the advent of the strip mall. Even in smaller communities, the car ruled um, in Muncie, Indiana, site of the famous sociological survey of the 1920s, one elder replied when asked what was taking place, I can tell you what's happening. It's just four letters, auto. A nation that had always revered symbols of movement from the Mayflower to the covered wagon had a new icon to worship. That's just one of uh, some of the information you can pull from. Uh, but please review pages 720 and 721 to review this question. Or get ready for this essay. The differences between the differences between Hubert Hoover between Hoover and Roosevelt, Hubert Hoover and Roosevelt, FDR and Roosevelt were more appearance than reality. Says uh, this is a comment that the text makes. To what extent is this true? In what ways is it false? Provide specific reasons and examples in making your point. So please review pages 754 and 755. And one of the things you'll want to take a look at are, is men are often, you know, their leadership is often made by the things that happened during their administration. So moving from the 1920s into the Great Depression, you're coming from a very prosperous period right into a, a recession and then a depression. As that's happening, the president in office, Hoover, has to make calculations as to what to do. He's coming from this, the Mellon School, the Calvin Coolidge School of let business run let the business run independently of any government influence this laissez-faire economic um, position so he's going to want to maintain that but he does end up starting what we, we, what we can call the pre-new deal programs uh, the, the Hoover Dam the Reconstruction Finance Corporation the, the Federal Farm Bureau all of these things are government interaction in the market the difference being that it's not direct funding to individuals, it's more to corporations, businesses, and farms. Um, what were the permanent changes of the New Deal? This is uh, one of the questions you'll need to think about. Uh, were these changes for the better or not? Provide specific examples and comparisons when supporting your point of view. Review page 775 to go over New Deal um, programs. Social Security being one, the Wagner Act that supported the ability for labor unions to um, to contend with uh, the corporations, and the minimum wage law are just a few things you can include in your examples there to explain whether those are good or bad. Um, and you'll remember that uh, even you know, Reagan once uh, pointed out, Ronald Reagan, um, when thinking about FDR, he said you're, he would use the "Are you better off today than you were four years ago?" something that that uh, FDR would would use as a refrain in, in many of his uh, his accounts. He says that uh, Reagan Reagan's critics acknowledged that he was a masterful political reformer. Theodore Roosevelt termed the presidency the bully pulpit, and Franklin D. Roosevelt gave this pulpit a new dimension in the radio age with folksy fireside chats. Reagan, a former Democrat who had voted three times for FDR and admired him, adapted the bully pulpit to television. He sometimes borrowed directly from FDR. Um, so it's interesting that Reagan was not only a, a, a bold Democrat supporter in his younger years, he was a very ardent uh, supporter of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And you'll have to ask yourself why. What were, the, what were some of the things that may have changed? And were these things a product of the time? Uh, do different times call for different leadership? Or is it always just stick to these policies and we'll do fine? Uh, you'll have to come to those conclusions on your own because those are ideological questions, questions on um, party uh, over country or country first before party. All of those things will have to fall with, with your own opinion using the facts and information you've been provided for the course. Thank you for um, continuing with this. Uh, study for tests and quizzes and please call, email, or Skype for more information if you have any questions. Talk to you soon. Thank you.